Mr. Mitchell, can you hear us? Yeah, I hear you. All right, uh, Levy, thank you for taking the time out of your uh, your day to. Is that did I pronounce that right? Uh, I it, it's pronounced so many ways. You can call me Levi Levy. If I, I it doesn't matter. I know I'm doing. So. What do you like to be? What do you like best? Do you like Levi? Yeah, I'll go with Levi. All right, Levi Mitchell. It is then. I don't want to. I don't want to say Levy because that would make you. That would. I'd make. I'd feel bad. <laughs> no problem. All right, my friend. So you've uh, you've had an interesting career here, and you've been you've been doing music since quite a young age. Um, people. The first question I want to ask though is: People say you look a lot like Justin Bieber. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, of course, I I know personally that I get I get. Uh, Hey, you look like Jesse Bieber all of the time, um, which, which I, I don't take offense to it at first I did because I, I don't even know who this kid was at first, but so I, I look I looked him up. I'm like, oh okay, okay. I learn more, but look how successful he is. If you're comparing me to success, I'll take that any day. Um, but the fact that most people just do it just because I uh, I spike my hair up or I wear hats. I mean. I'm not the only kid who does those things. So it's just, it's, it, I don't know what I'm saying, but that's how I feel about it, really. It's like, I, I have no problem with it. It's their opinion. Um, I just think, I think my music style is a little bit different than his. So Fair enough. Now, um, you began music, excuse me, at a, at a, at a very early age. Um, what, what musicians had a big influence on you? Um, well, I grew up with a music family. My mom was a piano player. She was a professional singer. She worked in Vegas. Um, my dad sang a few musicals when he was younger, but that's pretty much it. Um, uh, Band-wise, I used to, my favorite band used to be Hawk Nelson. I got to sing with him one day. I got, got to their concert really early, pulled me backstage. We sang um, musically on guitar, I would say John Mayer, um, Piano wise, I would probably say like a band like the Fray because they're real, they're piano heavy. Um, I've I've pulled so many different aspects of so many different artists and their music styles and everything. I've kind of just all put it together into what what I do now. So I yeah, I don't really have one specific inspiration. Now I'm also aware that you're also a screenwriter and you wrote rock opera. Is is that is that correct? Yeah, I did. How did you get started in that, and, and, and how did that begin? Okay, well, the rock opera is called The Way Rock Opera, based off my song, off my album, Life As I Know It. Go check it out. Um, I started writing it when I was 12, like in that area, like around when I was 12 to 13. And I, I know I'm 12 to 13. If you've seen the player, like this was not written by a 12, 13-year-old. This is like stuff 18-year-olds would write about or... Because it, it's 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 uh, a it's pretty uh, revealing to what teenagers go through. So I started writing it uh, around 12 and 13 about about stuff teenagers go through, all the all of the problems, all the obstacles in the way. It starts off as a young boy, which I played the young boy. Um, his parents, his dad's a mailman. His mom's just a stay at home stay at home mom. Dad comes home, wants to start a church. Now, the young boy already doesn't get to see his family enough. But now, when it starts appearance, he feels like he's being uh, abused and not being able to see his parents at all. So he looks for more outlets. Um, he finds a band. He, he leaves his good group of friends to join this band. And the band's already heavily in alcohol, drugs. And the, his initiation into the band is to steal alcohol from a, like a corner store. Now, ever since then, he's left. He left uh, his beliefs in God. He left every, all of that just to join this band. And then once he realized, once he realized he has made a mistake, it was almost too far. And I'm not going to tell you the middle of it of the play because that's very revealing. Because I plan on doing it again, getting it on video so all my fans could see it, you guys could see it. But something ha something happens in there that's pretty life-changing for him um and then someone i'm just not revealing names so because you, you guys will figure out the ending of the play i can't tell you that um but <laughs> he gets witness to uh he goes and he goes and confesses to his friends saying look i need to make a change in my life and 
he just changes his whole life around, and then he has a few followers and just saying, it's never too late to change for good, basically. Um, let me talk to you. I wanted to get to know a bit more about your album, Life As I Know It. And you mentioned that Rock Opera, one of the songs is off that album. Talk to me about the 11 tracks on the album. What was the hardest part about creating it? Hardest part about creating it was probably trying i know it probably doesn't even sound that sound that hard but probably finding like what songs go on the album and what songs stay and get better for the next album because i had probably about like 20 to 30 songs just to choose for this album and those are the 11 i picked that was probably the hardest part was to choose the top 11 and take me through that decision process of how you narrow down from 20 to 11 uh, I usually started off saying, what's the story I want to tell? What's the main message I want to tell with this album, with the CD, what I want to get out there, what, what I want my music to portray? So I would, first I'll be, the first song on there is I'll Be There. It talks about no matter what you go through, God's always going to be there for you. Second song is Where Would I Be Without You? And it all ties into like a long story, a long message. Now, not all of them were in the way the rock opera hero was, but they all have, like, a similar message. So, like, I didn't want to have I'll Be There and then jump to a love song, the love song or a song where I'm just, like, I don't know, just sitting at home on my TV. I've written so many songs. I just wanted to stick with one main basis and one main message with my songs that those were the top 11 that fit that description better than any other all right now i want to switch gears a little bit uh stepping a little bit away from uh the rock opera as nick was saying tell uh, for people that have never heard never heard your musical style before how how would you describe the music that you make well the music i make i would say is more more guitar driven um less less poppy sound i mean my cd right now has has some poppy songs on it, but once I get the time to like, I'll have a little, once I craft my music style to where I know exactly where I want it, I know what I want it. I want it to be like smooth, like like jazzy guitar. Some people say I'm a mix between like the Fray, Maroon 5, Switchfoot, and the Scripts, which I think are all great bands. And I think if you all put those all together, I think that's what, comes out as me i guess yeah all right Levy. uh sorry there for the little bit of a problem if you had a trouble hearing me there um you you're managed by raymond entertainment uh, what's that relationship been like for you uh i've loved it ever since i i signed with them even before i signed with them they contacted me i just thought they were really cool i've seen some of their artists like you guys said you guys have had alabama capital um i love them uh, and they have they have so many guys, and uh, they're starting up to get some girls too. But I just love the relationship. It's been we've had our ups and downs, but you know what? I've always looked on the bright side. They've helped me get to where I am now. Um, if it wasn't for them, I'd probably still be at my 653 followers. Um, and they've just done a lot for me. And the relationships going strong, and I. Would love to keep them for the long haul. What's um, how have they have they helped you without giving away all of their shoes? Because obviously that's not fair, and I'm sure you're under some sort of contract obligations. But you know, in a in a roundabout way, how how have they really helped you? What's been the biggest strength for them that's helped you get your music out there? They have a group of girls that spam the heck out of a new video, out of a song. And they spam it to probably the most random people ever. I've, like, I don't even know where they find this many people to tweet. And it's a group of, like, just from, like, I, I don't even know how many there are. There's just so many. They just tweet, 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 spam so many people. They spam famous people. They spam all kinds of stuff. And then the next day I'll wake up with another 1,000 views or another 2,000 views. Um... And then once they once they start spamming that, the people start watching it. Then they tell their friends, and then they post it on Facebook. And then it, the build, the views start start building up. 
And that's probably the main reason why I've been there, been to where I am right now. But they've done many things behind the scenes that helped me to shape me as an artist and to shape my my personality as musically wise. Music wise. Yeah. You, you currently live in, in Arizona, but you mentioned earlier and uh I know from your bio that you were actually born in Vegas and you said your mother worked in Las Vegas. Now, what brought you to Arizona? Well, I, I lived, I lived in Vegas until I was about five or six. And then we moved out there because the church we went to in Vegas had a sister church we moved in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. And, uh, we decided, they decided to come out here and support that. Church. We're out here now. We've been out here ever since. Um, I have a love hate relationship for Arizona and it's, yeah, it's just my parents decided to come out here, support what they do for the church. And honestly, I think it was a great idea for some reason. I feel like I, it's really shaped my music somehow, some way, but yeah, they just, they just decided to come out here for the church. How often do you get a chance to go back to uh, Las Vegas? As soon as we can, as we'll we'll always try to figure out if I'm on break or something. Can we go to Vegas? Um, I try. I stay in touch with all my friends back there, um, with the church back there. I I've missed the heck out of them, but uh, we try to go as like as much as possible. Now you um. You just mentioned, and it's something I actually want to ask you. Uh, you're you're mentioned you're you're a youth leader, uh, from what I understand, at, at your church. Can you talk about your relationship with the church and with God, and and, and uh, what that's like? Yeah, um, I am, I am the uh, a youth worship leader at uh, our church for the youth group. Um, I, it's 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 been a roller coaster ride there, but in the end, it's. It's, I'm not there to pref- I'm not there to have a spotlight on me. I'm not there to there to try to get all the glam and all the oh you did so good. No, it's really there and it's really there for what I know what's right and what I know what God placed in my heart is that my relationship with God has been strong ever since I was born in the church, raised in the church. Um, I was based around the Bible. Uh, it's it my my journey with God has really been awesome. Um, he, he only puts obstacles in front of me because he knows I can, I can overcome them with him. But uh, I, I'm really strong in my faith, and just me being able to be interactive with my church is a great thing. And the fact that they accept me for who I am. A lot of charity work. Excuse me. There, you also have a lot of charity work, and you're big on that kind of stuff. What kind of charities and fundraisers are you really passionate about? Well, I, I really like. I know a few people with cancer, and I've always wanted to start my own foundation. Um, I'm called, no, I'll keep that to myself. You know what? Because I'm going to start it, and I don't want the name stolen, but that's just me. But uh, um, I, I'm really passionate for people with illness uh, and the kids. I really love the younger kids, man. Anything I could do to help them or put a smile on the face, it just brightens my day. Um, I don't have any specific charities. Um, but, um, but I would love to give a shout out to some of my friends from Las Vegas who own his, his parents own a, a cancer, a cancer charity. It ain't chemo. Um, I grew up with them. Great, great friends, great family friends. And I really support what they're doing. What are the, the things that I, um, I've re- when I was researching it that I found interesting is that you uh you you like going to the movies you like hanging out with your friends and, and that sort of stuff but you also like Five Guys Burger Shop. What is it about what about what is it about that place? It's like everybody compares it to In and Out and I always almost always get in an argument with them about it. I think Five Guys is probably the best burger place ever. Not not just the food. Yes, the food is great. Um, it is it is a toss up between In and Out and Five Guys. But I've had memories behind Five Guys with my grandpa, with my uncle. Whenever I go to Oregon, I always we always go out there. We don't even go to the house first to drop off my luggage. We go straight to Five Guys. Um, but I, I always get a double cheeseburger with grilled onions, 
and A1 sauce, extra A1 sauce. Man. And it's, it's just amazing with Cajun fries. Man, that sounds good. I haven't eaten since like 11 o'clock this morning, so that sounds awesome. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Well, this is actually leads to the next question I'm going to ask is if somebody were to come to Arizona and, and if they've never been before and you're their tour guide, what, what are the things you're going to do most? Like where would you take them in Arizona or, or Phoenix or what would you do with them? Well, depends on what they like. If they want to go sightseeing, I'd take them to Sedona, Flagstaff, the Grand Canyon. Um, I'd take them, it, depending if they like history, I'd take them to all the historical events and take them to okay corral that's what it's called right yeah that's what it's called that, that big shootout and stuff i've been there and but if they want to really just hang out and chill i take them to like the bowling alley that's really cool two-story uh laser tag the movies i take them to my my favorite spots to eat and my favorite spots to shop uh i really try to make arizona look fun no, the way you say that, are you trying to imply that Arizona isn't fun? That you have to, <laughs> you, you have to dress it up. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> what what it's is okay, it? It's okay. Ontario's the same way. What is it about it? Like, what what do you hate most about Arizona? Then the heat. It never goes away. Well, you're yeah. in Arizona. You're in a desert, man. It's, it seems well, like it would never go. Las away. Vegas was a desert, but it cooled off every once in a while. It's like it will be like it will be Christmas Day, and it's like 98 degrees outside. It's not. It's not. It's just not right. Now, like, did you ever hope for a white Christmas in Arizona? <laughs> well, I had a white Christmas in Las Vegas, but oh. that it's not Arizona. But it's still the desert, so it's pretty awesome. But he, I always, always, always want a white Christmas in Arizona. But I know it's never going to happen. Well, you can just come to Canada, man. We can trade places any day of the week because I'm sick of snow. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I only, I only want to see it on two play in the mountain or on TV. So you can have, <laughs> yeah. you can have our snow. That's about the only places we see it too, and barely the mountains because it melts by the time we get up there. What was the first react when you first saw snow, like in real life? I mean, with you were, you know, you got to actually like experience snow. What was what was going through? You're like, oh my god, snow! This is the coolest thing. Exit. That's you just took the words right out of my mouth. I jumped right in it. Uh, I tried to make a snowball. It was more like just a bunch of snow in my hand. It, when I threw it at my grandpa, it kind of just like. Just fell right back on the ground, but I was, man, I was diving in the snow. Uh, I was sledding down on whatever I could find. Uh, I'd be crashing into trees on the sleds. I'd be having snowball fights once I learned how to make them. It was, I, I tried to stay out there as long as I can until it was like dinner time or something. So what's it? What's winter like? It, in it's Arizona? decided we're bring, we're bringing you up to Canada yeah, for. Yeah. You're, you can come to Toronto and you can experience a white Christmas here. Yeah, okay. where it's where it's three feet of snow on the ground from November until April. And then, trust me, you'll think a lot highly of Arizona. You'll you'll never want to. Once you experience the minus temperatures on a daily basis, you'll 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 know that Arizona's oh. warmer and better. Sounds nice. I, I don't know, man. I don't know if you have to shovel three feet of snow every every so often, but it's uh it's probably a lot worse than shoveling three feet of sand. Although shoveling three feet of sand would actually be really hard. Yeah, but we don't have to shovel sand, thank but Yeah, the, what's how, how cold does it get at night there? Like I hear, like my parents used to go down to Arizona every so often when they were younger, and my grandparents had a place down there, and they said it got cold at night. Is that true? On on a good night, yes. <laughs> on a good uh, night. And about I was going to say, define define cold for us. Are we talking like seventy five? No. Oh. I'm trying to think. Like fifties, the the coldest it's ever gotten while I've been here is probably the forties, but wow. right now it's right now it's seventy seven. So oh man, well, that's, not, that's well. not too. That's pretty good. That's a nice. It's a nice. Now are you a big sports guy? Yes, definitely. Uh, you are you big? Uh, I, I want to say, are you big University of Las Vegas fan? But more importantly, I guess more specifically, are you a big Arizona sports fan? Um, I support them. I wouldn't say um, well, that's my favorite team, uh, but I I definitely am like a Pac-12 guy when it comes to college sports. Are you a Cardinals fan? That's my second favorite team. I only I only like two NFL teams. What, what's your other favorite team? Um, next question. That's okay. You can be. Yeah, I'm a Dolphins yeah, fan. I was gonna say you're talking really a, you're talking to a Jets and Dolphins fan. Like it doesn't get any more embarrassing than that. Well, you could be oh. a Browns fan, and that might uh, be fair tough. enough. 
No, I'm a Saints fan. Hey, that's not too bad. They actually do something. I mean, despite the whole weird thing where they had that that scandal and stuff. Honestly, they at least they won the Super Bowl in recent memory. You got to go yeah. back to '72 for the Dolphins to do anything. We're two and four. Hey. I mean, you know what? The Dolphins are. I think they're three and. Th- I don't know if they won last week, but the last time I looked, they were three and three. But I guarantee you, they'll be like three and and like whatever, three and twelve by the end of the season. Yeah, just for us to even have like a dream of the wild card, we'd have to get to like nine and four. Hey, at least you have hope, right? Um, my team's in a division with the the Patriots, so it's never gonna be easy. The Cardinals beat them. Yeah, yeah, that was a good game actually. Yeah. All right, are you a baseball guy? Big baseball fan? Uh, yeah, I, I watch it. Um, I would say, what well, what's the question first? Well, I was just gonna ask, are you a big uh, are you a big Diamondbacks fan? Yeah, actually, I, I'm. That's probably the, the Diamondbacks and the Coyotes are probably the two Arizona teams I'd probably support wholeheartedly. Um, but I'm also a Mariner fan. You, you just mentioned that you are a Phoenix Coyotes fan. You might be the only person I know in the entire world that actually cheers for the Phoenix Coyotes. What is it about the Coyotes that you love so much? Well, I I play I played hockey when I was younger. I, I I always played street hockey. I liked knocking kids on their butt and like giving them scars and stuff. It's pretty fun because it's on the street. And so when I went to my first co- it was the first hockey game I ever went to was a Coyote game. So that they played the L.A. Kings. And uh, I didn't at first. I didn't know what was happening, and then then I went and researched it, and then I started playing hockey. And then so ever since, just because it, it was my first hockey game experience, I just I like I like that team. So now we're gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you some questions because you realize that we are in the mecca of hockey in Canada. Yes. We're we're here in Toronto, so everything to do with hockey happens here. We think we're the center of the universe for everything, but most specifically for hockey. So yes. I I gotta ask first, was it hard to get tickets to Coyotes games? you're <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. ah, No, it wasn't. No, okay, that's fine. And I was just I was just having some fun there because I I know there's a lot of Canadians that would love to see the Coyotes come back to Canada, or yes, because they came from the Jets. Um, but what was it? What drew you to hockey? I guess other than was it the the contact of the sport? Was it the high speed of the sport? What what drew you into to really liking hockey? Uh, I like hitting people. Um, probably the contact, that's yeah. A good, that's a good. And I like I, the first year I ever played hockey. I, I picked it up real quick, and we actually went undefeated. Is, is that in a street hockey league, or, or do they have an ice hockey league down in, in Arizona? Um, we it was street hockey, but since even if it was indoors, the ice would melt because it's so hot here. Um, yeah, I've always tried to get in ice hockey but it's always like it's always like five hours away just for a practice oh, so i kind of just stuck with street hockey yeah and i i guess uh, you know i i was wondering how how many ice rinks are there in arizona i mean we, there's tons here in ontario i mean my gosh they, they don't have enough but uh, yeah there's like three in the whole state yeah so uh, in terms of street hockey does it get really I, i've played street hockey before I'm, i andrew grew up playing street hockey his whole life um how intense is street hockey like is it really hard to find other people that want to play street hockey i just it's yeah. a culture thing for us but and it's a normal thing for us but i don't know what it's like in arizona i mean i would imagine yeah. pickup baseball we'll, is bigger and we're like oh did you get those new like roller skates oh yeah dude yeah the new we'd be like no everything about a roller skates and everybody's like they're just roller skates like no man special edition types of stuff like that i love i love street hockey i love hockey in general but uh, yeah, me, I, I, our team was freaking awesome. I'm not gonna lie. That's all I can say. When you went to see your first Coyotes game, do you, uh, you said they played the Kings. Have you seen any other games since then? Yes, I've seen about four other games, and they've all been LA Kings. Ooh, interesting. Um, do you? Who's your favorite player on the Coyotes? Honestly, he's gone. He's dead. Who was that? Think about it. Come on. I'm thinking. I can't think of anybody who's died recently on the Coyotes. Well, like maybe not dead, but dead to the sport. Okay, I don't know what I'm saying right now. Well, oh, it's past your bedtime. Past your bedtime. Okay. Well, we'll ask you a couple more questions that aren't to do with hockey. Um, 
Talk a little bit about where the next step for you is as a musician. I was kidding about the bedtime, too. That's I'm No, just, I know. It's, cool. it's probably, what time is it in Arizona anyway? I can't never understand their time zone. It's 7.58. That's weird. What time is it there? It's 10.58 oh, yeah, here. Yeah, it's, it's 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's 8 o'clock here. So. That's an interesting, interesting, interesting funny place. Anyway, uh, where, what's the next step for you music, musically? Um, I'll be working on my EP, and I have Teen Hoot coming up, which is a, a festival where a bunch of YouTube singers get together in Nashville, Tennessee, and we put on a show. Now, are, are you confirmed to going there? Like, Because uh, I've been keeping it, and I know Alabama Capital says they're going, um, and you're confirmed as well? I am confirmed, yeah. What are you looking forward to most about it? Because it's an interesting event. Uh, they don't really do anything like that kind of style up here in Canada. We have our own sort of indie music weeks and that sort of stuff, but they don't really get a bunch of YouTube singers together and do that. So what are you looking forward to most about it? Um, I'm, all, I'm looking forward to the artists, to meeting the artists uh, themselves and the artists that have worked with Rain Man to see what their experience was. And I think it's, it could lead to a lot of cool collaborations on YouTube um, to expand both of our fan base. Um, and maybe even, like... Well, I also get to sell merchandise. Um, I'll get to sport the clothing line that I'm sponsored by, Barnabas Clothing. And it, it's just going to be awesome. I'm excited for everything, especially since it's my first time. One other thing I did want to ask you is you also have a bit of an acting career from what I understand. Um, talk to me a little bit briefly about your acting career. Um, I would say probably the biggest one that I did was I, was, I played Ralphie in A Christmas Story. And I was Zazu in The Lion King, um, that blue bird. Um, I did so many plays when I was younger. I got to love the winter game. So. Sorry. Hey, that's Andrew just being ADD at the moment. Um, okay, uh, last couple <laughs> Ooh, questions. Oh, shiny. Last couple questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. And the funny thing is I'm the one with ADD here. Like uh, yeah, like I, actually, like it's 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 horrible. I mean, look, there's a cat over there. But uh, okay, so anyway, it took a lot of focus for me not to look. Anyway, Levi, how can people get a hold of you on social media? You're very uh, you're up there on Twitter. Obviously, you're connected with YouTube. But how can people get a hold of you? Like get my attention. Well, sure. Or, or the, either that or get in contact you. with you. <laughs> well, get in contact with me. I'd probably say either like email my. The website, the contact me web uh, email off my off my website, um, or Twitter. I'm always on Twitter. You can add me on Facebook. I'll probably add you even if I don't know you, but I'm never on. What is your Facebook so people that want to add you actually try to add you and and can add you? Because I I don't know what it is. I'd have to probably Google it. It's just Levi Mitchell, really. It's I, yeah. Um, I don't have those MySpace names. Right on. Do you use MySpace? Are you a big MySpace guy? No. Have you ever been was, on MySpace? Yeah, I, I I was on it when I was in like fourth and fifth grade. I didn't like it. Yeah, it's it's a little confusing, eh? Yeah, yeah it was just yeah, it was, it was just too much. I didn't. I, first social media, and I see things I'm not supposed to see at that age, and this is flying around everywhere. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, it's a little different. All right, um, so you have a website as well. Do you want to tell your fans what, or tell people that have never, ever heard of you what your website is and uh, just, like, all the links that people can find you at just so, you know, people know? Yeah, uh, you can check my website out at levimitchell.com. Um, follow me on Twitter at Levi Mitchell. And on YouTube, look me up at Music by Levi Mitchell. And uh, Facebook's just Levi Mitchell. And I haven't started a Tumblr. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much all that I'm ever on. Right on. Now, anything else you want to add before we let you go tonight? Um, I just want to say thank you to all the support that I've had so far. Um, and I'm looking forward to what I have to come. And I'm excited. And thank you guys for having me on Radio Nation. Thanks a lot for coming on, Levi. It has uh, been a pleasure as always. And if you ever want to come up here and experience what real hockey is like, you are more than welcome to do so. We uh, we can play ice hockey and we can shovel three feet of snow out and play ice hockey on an actual pond, which is probably something you don't do in Arizona because they don't, they don't freeze. 
Well, the closest I've been to that is my grandparents' pond in Indiana. It freezed, but I was like four years old, so I didn't go on it. But but my uncle was skating on it, and then it broke, and then he couldn't get out. Well, that just sounds horrible, and I've been through experiences like that, and it's not fun, especially if, well, I, thankfully I didn't drown, but I saw somebody who, who they didn't die, but my God, they were drowning. It was it was, it was life altering. <laughs> All right, Levi, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. We will play some music later on in the broadcast, so uh, thanks a lot for taking the time out of your night to uh, join us, and uh, all the best, and hopefully you can send our guy out from Nashville to, to cover uh, Teen Hoot, and maybe he'll see you there. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me, and uh, if you do send one of your guys to Teen Hoot, I am, now I'm getting a little excited to meet one of you guys. Cool. So, yeah.